Doodle Bud. Back again, Fabric Castell. Um, I'm really enjoying, enjoying these pens. This one is actually a gift for someone and thought I would just uh, try it out really quick before I give it to them tomorrow to make sure everything's working good. Nothing worse than giving someone a pen and then uh, it's scratchy or there's something wrong with it. So, and shh, I kind of want to try it myself. So this is the uh, Loom, very popular pen. Um, I've never had like a desire to own one. That's why I don't own one, but I know it's a really good pen. For me, it's just the styling isn't my most favorite, but nonetheless, I hear it's a really good pen. And, uh, then when I actually checked it out in store, I quite enjoyed it, just how it feels and whatnot and answered some of my questions. So I thought I would, um, show you as well. So nice little spring clip that's on there. Very functional, very nice. Of course, the Faber-Castell logo in the cap. This is like, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but like a blue steel. Um, I don't know what logo that is in the back. Cause that, I, oh, I got you. That, that, that is the standard Faber-Castell. Here's an Andoro. You can see it there. It's just a little bit larger. That's why I'm used to seeing the logo with the name. But there you go. This one, so it's chrome. It's got a little dimple here as well. Very similar to say the emotions got the dimple top and bottom too. Got a pop cap. It is a fairly stiff cap. So the, the popping is quite, like if you have to actually push it, I wonder if that gets a little less severe over time, but you definitely know what's on there. Uh, it has the same nib here too. So you can see it's got that same little plastic collar. So as far as I know, these are exactly the same nibs. Um, cap is actually fairly nice and light. Um, I guess there's probably different versions. This feels like it's plastic, not a metal one. I have a friend who uh, was saying his, when he posts it, it's just too heavy, just too, uh, way too back heavy. This one doesn't feel like that at all. So, um, you know, this one wasn't overly expensive. So maybe this is, you know, I don't know too much about the loom. Maybe all the looms are, are, are lightweight like that, or maybe some of them are metal. So, but it fits very comfortably in the hand. This is definitely one I would post. I feel actually it's maybe just there, just if I was going to write something quickly. Um, but if I was going to write longer, I definitely post it and it's quite comfortable, not back weighted. So, uh, I know some of the favors or fabers, um, the caps can be quite heavy. So with like the Andoro, it is quite heavy in the back there. I, for me, I think maybe it's just my the size of my hand. It feels okay. And even with the, uh, the emotion as well, another very heavy metal cap. Uh, but again, it just works exceptionally well, uh, for this pen. So I have reviews on both of those pens. If you want to check them out. Um, yeah, same thing. It's got the converter. I had to buy it separately. This pen didn't come with it. So just a standard Faber-Castell converter. They're nice converters. Again, it's got the little uh, steel coil in there just to help break surface tension, which is great. So yeah, your standard bits. And uh, you know, I'll do some quick measurement and weight on it real fast, and then we'll give it a quick writing sample. So as far as weight goes, oh, rolling off there. There we go. So we got 32 and a half grams. So, you know, that's a 30 grams is a very kind of common, uh, pen weight. I see that in a lot of pens. So the cap is about seven. So yeah, it's actually not overly heavy. You know, it, it's well, even that cap, right? So seven grams, that's nothing. It's all mostly in the body. So I guess there must be some other, uh, looms where it's, it's a heavier cap and maybe that causes the back weighting, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have that issue at all. So just as an example, so that was 32 and a half. The wood on Doro, you know, let's call that 45. And then the emotion, you know, 56. So quite a big difference. So very comfortable weight with the loom. Let's just get out the calipers here and give you some quick measurements. Total length, we got, call that 130. Just the pen itself. I think you'd always want to post this one just because... <laughs> this thing could just slide away. So there we're about 120 ish. Let's call that. And then if you post it, yeah, so 120 is a bit short, right? 
And then if you post it, we're looking at about 150. Nice round numbers. So yeah, it's it's nice pen. Let's check out the section. So it does uh, taper as you can see, but let's just pick, you know, up maybe around the second ring there. That seems like a fairly common, comfortable place to hold it, at least for me. What have we got there? So 11 and a quarter or so. So yeah, it, the widest it gets back here, 11 and three quarter and right at the end, 10 and a quarter, let's just say. So there you go, weights, measurements, Let's, um, just curious that back posting, is it click to, or is it just a pressure fit? Yeah, just a pressure fit. So there we go. That's uh, a couple details in the pen. Let's just give it a quick writing sample. This has a fine. Um, I, d I mean, I just want to make sure this nib works okay. But I imagine it's going to be exactly the same as the other Faber, Faber Castell uh, fine steel nibs I have, which I'm very pleased with as well. So before I do a writing sample, I just check the nib under the loop here. I thought I'd do the same for you guys there too. So I always want to just make sure the tines look good. But yeah, it's, they make really nice nibs for a steel nib, especially out of the box. Um, so far, my experience has been fantastic. Um, but yeah, here's just some close-ups so you can see. Nice alignment. Nothing's out of alignment there. Even if you're going, we can always have as one tine higher than the other. Tough to pick this up again on the phone, but there you go. Just some close-ups of the nib, just giving it a look to make sure it's all good. And uh, I, what I'm doing here is I just using the converter out of one of my other pens. And that's already inked up. There we get a little ink into there. And then I'll just flush it out really nice. Just put some through there. There it comes. Okay, there just had to prime it a little bit more. There we go. That's one thing when you do fill it with the pen and convert it's always ready to go all right so this is the faber yeah that's nice castell and this is let me zoom in a little bit not that i have great writing and this is in a fine nib of course it's a steel nib but very uh light pressure like it's just you know, I should get a Faber Castell in a in a medium because I heard they're, you know, it's a very common, popular size mediums. But most of my stuff require fine that I do uh, with my fountain pens. But these are super smooth for a fine. I can only imagine what the medium is like. You know how the yellow alphabet goes, and. Uh, Again, writing sample. The seashore, okay. Russian thing, let's try reverse. Yeah, it actually comes out, you know, of course it's scratchy and stuff, but you know, if you need to, if there's a little box that you're filling out and you have to fill in your birthday and you're like, oh man, what a tiny little box, you know, you can flip it over and write in there as well. As far as line variation, not really, you know, but as far as a very pleasurable pen and nib, you know, to write with overall balance is good. Uh, you know, this is slick, but it's got these little steps in there to help give a bit of a grip which is nice and uh yeah i think they're going to be happy with it so there we go there's my quick take on the faber castell loom pretty happy with it great pen especially for the price point you get a good nib on it too you know the look may or may not be for you i just don't kind of like the bulbous uh cap and it's just kind of a plane versus you know this is fairly cool and obviously my other one oh that one's taken apart but but again to each their own style is you know that's your own deal but uh this is i wanted to get something that was going to be a quality pen that i knew is a good nib writes exceptionally well 
Um, he likes a bit of a fine one as well. So there we go. Good price. Check you later next time. So you know me, I'm always a fan of bonus footage. So I'll just show you how I'll really quickly clean out a pen like this. So I just have a glass of water over here. I'm gonna fill the bulb. I just filled up the bulb syringe. You just put it into the pen. And there you go. Till it's clear. So that's pretty much done. I'll just do one more. But I didn't even run this underwater. I just, away you go. So great for the cartridge converter style pens. Great way to flush it out, get all that ink out. In this case, I didn't use the converter on the pen. And uh, yeah, I can't remember if this one slides out. Yeah, this one just slides apart too. So you can always just give it a quick little rinse as well. Just to get every last little bit out. But now we're all nice and clean. I'll just dry it off and put it back together.